Welcome to the sports podcast that will put you in the zone all the time. Welcome to Pack Sports Zone with me, your host, Peter Pacman Clark. What's going on, guys? We got another episode of Pack Sports Zone baseball today. As we're going over pretty much all the top 10 power rankings like we did last week, a lot of movement from last week as teams start to get ready as they. Get ready as we hit the middle of the season. They've played probably around 30 games or 25, 30 games now. So really starting to get into the middle of the season and see how teams are really going to go. Um, let's get right into it. Uh, first, COVID update from today, actually. Um, there's a Mets player and a Mets staff member that have tested positive for COVID-19. Their game tonight with the Marlins has been canceled, ironically with the Miami Marlins, has been canceled. And also their game with the New York Yankees tomorrow that was supposed to be in City Field has also been canceled. So we'll see if the, if they get any games played this weekend against the Yankees or if the whole series will end up being canceled. For right now, just the game tomorrow on Friday is canceled. We'll see how long that goes. But let's get right into the power rankings, and let's start with number 10, the Atlanta Braves. The Braves are pretty much just barely holding into this top 10, mostly because no other team has really stepped up, and um, Marlins and Rockies have pretty much killed themselves the past week, uh, going 2-8 and eight their last 10. So the Braves really aren't a very good team right now. They still can't pitch. It's still just one pitcher and free it in their bullpen, but no matter who it is that they're trying to start, they're not pitching well. So, And, and obviously, Acuna is on the IL. Uh, Albies is on the IL. They just brought out Christian Pache, who is a young 20-year-old kid who, who's very, very bright future. Uh, he's the number 14 prospect in baseball. He's the Braves' number one prospect in their organization. So they do expect a lot from him, but he's a young kid. Uh, he's probably going to be re- eventually taken over for Ender and Ciarte, who has gone off to a horrible start this year. And he's gone off to horrible starts before, and he's a great second-half hitter. But you don't have time for a horrible start when you're only playing 60 games. So they have to make that change right now, and it looks like the torch is being passed this weekend as Pasha has been called up, and we'll see him get some starts in this weekend. As we move on to number nine, a newcomer into the group of power rankings this week, the Chicago White Sox. And listen, the Chicago White Sox have been pretty much pounding the foot, pounding the football. Wow, I'm in another sport right now, but they've been pounding the baseball. Uh, multiple people on their team have at least five, six home runs. Eloy Jimenez, who was a young 23 year old kid, one of their top prospects, they actually signed him to a big deal before he even took a major league pitch, and he is blasting the football right football wow uh once again i'm out of it today i'm listen the reason i'm out of it today is because the chicago bulls actually didn't pick seventh they actually were in the top four of the lottery so that kind of messed me up today but uh that'll tell you what time i'm actually taping this at it's around 9 30 eastern standard time but eloy jimenez has been a real and lewis robert have been really, really two young kids for their team, 23 and 22 years old, and both of them are hitting uh, well. Not how well in terms of average, they're hitting okay. Uh, Jimenez is in the 250s, uh, Robert is uh, 270, 280, so they're hitting solid, but between the two of them, they have 12 home runs and 30 RBIs, so you can't really qualm up, have any qualms about that. And also, also Mankata, another good player. He's hitting in the 270s. He has another five home runs. I told you a while ago, um, in the offseason, actually, I told you that the Chicago White Sox are a team that could surprise. They have a bunch of young players and a lot of good, and they're all good. So they're starting to come into their own right now. They're starting to hit. And in terms of pitching, it's not great. I mean, they do have a young kid, Dylan Cease, who is tw- only 24 years old. He's a good, solid pitcher. He, he's a little up and down, but he's okay. Uh, they did sign Dallas Keiko from the Atlanta Braves. Uh, lefty that will, he's going to be average for you. He's not going to be great. He's not a number one anymore like when he won the Cy Young. He's probably not even a solid number two anymore, but he can be a number three and a steady presence in the starting rotation. And I'll tell you this, the Braves really miss him right now. Another young kid, uh, um, Lucas Galito, he's another 25-year-old. He has a lot of promise. Hasn't started off the year good so far, but 
he, like I said, he has a lot of promise. Their bullpen has been really good, though. Uh, Alex Colome is their closer. He has six saves already. He's been pretty much unhittable so far. Uh, their setup guy has been Matt Foster, and he's been also unhittable, even more unhittable than Colome, actually. They're, once they get to the game to about the seventh, eighth inning, it's been over almost every single time. They, neither one of them has given up a run yet, and they've been really dominant. So, the Chicago White Sox uh, entered the power rankings this week, and I won't say they're playing football anymore, so you don't have to worry about that. But they're back in the rankings, and let's move on to number eight, Minnesota Twins. Uh, Twins are 16-9 and nine right now. They were a little bit higher on the rankings last week. However, they've gone 6-4 and four this week. They kind of, in the past 10 games, they've kind of been average. Uh, they're still going to go as their usual way. They're not a great team, but... They they find way to win game find way to win games. Um, they're gonna be a playoff team in my opinion, but they don't really scare anybody in a playoff series. They're, as I said, they they seem that they'll never ever beat the Yankees in a playoff series, and we almost know that we're destined to see that the Yankees versus the Twins that we always see that every year, and then the Twins lose every year. But like I said, they're they're one of these teams that. I would not be surprised if they finished third in the division. The White Sox are really coming on strong. They won seven of their last ten. And the Indians, who I'm going to get to in a second, uh, they've also been won seven of their last ten, and they're coming on strong. So the Twins are going to be there. They're going to be over 500. It looks like you have to be around 500 and you'll make the playoffs. So they won't really have to worry. They're, six games over, they're seven games over 500 right now. Uh, they're a playoff team, but I don't see them as a playoff threat. However, let's go on to the team that has been very hot for the past 10 days, past 10 games, the Cleveland Indians that are 15-9 and right now and, as I said, won seven of their last 10 games. And I'm not even really going to do talk much about their hitting because they really haven't hit well at all. Uh, I, there's no, no person that's even really stand out. Um, Jose Ramirez has, has five home runs to lead their team, but n- nobody has really been hitting. It's been all pitching with them. Uh, Shane Bieber has been unhittable so far this year. I mean, literally unhittable. Uh, his ERA is 1.30. He's 4-0. He's, he's the ace of that staff and a young, at a young 25 years old. He's, his whip is under one and way under one. It's not even close. Then obviously you got the good story, Carlos Carrasco coming back from cancer last year. Uh, he's pitching okay, 3.71. He's pitching like a number four starter right now, number three, uh, uh, all right, number, a low end number three starter. Uh, I, obviously, uh, Aaron Shavala have been really good. He's been uh, ERA under three. He's been started f- his five games, and he's pitching about seven innings per start, and he's given them really good innings so far. And he's got, even though he's only three and two, he's put, they've been in every single game that he started. So, They've done good with their pitching. The, they still don't have a good closer right now. Brad Hand, who wasn't wasn't really one of my favorites when I remember the Braves were talking about seeing if they could get him. He, he had good numbers, but he's not really a dominating presence, and it's really hurting him this year. Uh, 5.4 ERA. Uh, has six saves, but his whip is 1.5, so he's giving up base runners, and even the ones that he saves, he's giving up base runners. So I'm not really happy with their bullpen. If their bullpen was stronger, then you really got to watch out for the team. And one team that obviously everybody is always watching this year, Houston Astros, a team that everybody loves to hate this year. And Carlos Correa has been one of the main guys that people have loved to hate. Obviously, we had the, the Joe Kelly issue when he threw the, threw the bat ball at him and got suspended for eight games, which got reduced to five games, by the way. But... Uh, still, nobody, they've been hit so many times this year. Nobody really is going to give them any kind of benefit of doubt on anything. Uh, but he's hitting very well this year. He's getting off to a good start, hitting over 320. I mean, he seems like, it's funny because he seems like he's been with that team for like 10 years. He's still only 25 years old. He's still a young kid. I mean, he's going to be a free agent in another year or two. And, he he's going to get a lot of money. As much as people want to hate him now, they're going to love to have him on their team. So when you throw him, you throw, obviously, Gary, another person that everybody loves to hate. I mean, he had that ethnic issue with some of the, with the Asian pitcher uh, a couple years ago. I think it, I think it was uh, from the Dodgers series. So he he's hitting 300. He's always been a good hitter, but he's another person that people love to hate. One person that isn't really isn't hitting right now, and that's been their big their big little guy, 
and Jose Altuve. He only, he has three home runs, but he's hitting under 200. He's hitting horrible this year. And of course, if somebody's hitting bad this year after they've been hitting great for the past couple of years, they're gonna bring up, hey, he was getting messages, he was getting notes, he knows what was coming. Altuve has been steadfast in saying that uh, he, he didn't want to be part of it. He's not. He, he ignored when they did something, and he told them to not do it when he was batting. But I mean, numbers are numbers. If you've been a three plus three hundred hitter for the past two three years, and now you're hitting two hundred, people are going to have a little side eye towards it. Uh, pretty much everybody on the team has been okay. Uh, you, it, they have their they have their stars in George Springer. You have Alex Bregman. You have all those guys. Listen, they have a lot of good people, and they even brought up the young kid Kyle Tucker to play this year. Uh, not hitting great, but I mean, they're just get he's just getting his feet wet. But they they have hitters, and you know they'll be there when it matters. The biggest thing about them is when they lost Verlander, it was their pitching because all they had was Zach Greinke. But in the meantime, while Verlander hasn't been there, they've had two pitchers that have really stepped up big time. Excuse me, I said two. There's three pitchers that have stepped up big time, and you might not even know them. Uh, I mean, obviously, Framber Valdez is a no-name to most people, but he's been pitching great in his five, four or five starts this year. Uh, ERA is under two. Whip is around one. He's been great. Uh, Christian Javier is another person. He's gotten four or five starts this year. ERA has been under three, and his whip has been under one, so you're not even getting on base much against him. And then um, Brandon Bielak. He's gotten three, four starts this year, ERA under two. So they're getting contributions from a lot of young players right now. All the players I just named were 26 or under. So they're getting contributions from a lot of young guys. And a lot of times when young guys come up, they they surprise the league. People, There's not much tape on them. And it, they find a way to get through the lineup pretty easily for the first time around. And then when teams start to get used to them, they start to see them. Then they can get hit on them. But right now, it's a short season, and this is a perfect chance for young pitchers to come up there and show what they got. And there's not really much time for teams to adjust. So it's a perfect time for Houston right now. But I just, even though they're gonna, they're looking good right now. They they've been very hot recently. They've won nine out of their last ten games. I just have problem picking them without Justin Verlander. Uh, Zach Greinke is a guy who has come up small in the playoffs numerous times. He's obviously not a guy who truly likes the pressure, and that is something that Justin Verlander thrives on. And without him there, I just don't see them challenging to win a World Series, despite how hot they are right now, despite their past and how we've seen how they've hit and everything. I just am not worried about the Houston Astros as long as Justin Verlander is not on their team. Moving on to the number five team in my power rankings, the New York Yankees. The Yankees have dropped a little bit. Um, They've been six and four the last ten, so they've been hovering around average. And you know what? It's not really completely their fault. They've had a lot of injuries. They've actually they have seven people right now that's on the injured list. Uh, They've had ten people on that injured list this year, which is as much as any other team in baseball. And to be honest, though, nobody's really going to feel sorry for them. Uh, any team that has a high payroll, nobody's really going to feel bad for that. Uh, they're pretty much going to say, all right, you lose two, three players, now you're even with us in terms of good players on your team. Uh, the wealth of riches is always going to be there. And people, when you do lose a couple, they, I mean, people just says, all right, keep going. No, don't need to cry about it. Uh, one thing that did hurt today, uh, and there hasn't been an update or I haven't seen an update yet, is uh, Torres, Glabar Torres, um, actually got hurt today during the game with Tampa Bay, and it didn't it look didn't look too serious, but you never could tell. I mean, it could was it looked like an ankle injury, so you never could tell how if he's going to be out for a couple of days or if they're going to put him on a ten day IL. So keep an eye on that to see how how bad that injury was for Glabar, and hope he gets back soon. He's one of the great young players in the league. And you never want to see anybody get hurt like that, especially one of the young players in the league. Uh, moving on to a team, another team that's been pretty good this year, and a team that's been probably going to surprise people uh, when you hear that hear what they've done so far this year, and that's the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's right now are eighteen and eight. Uh, they've gone six, one six out of the last ten, so they've been playing okay, just playing hovering right now. But it's a team that nobody talks about. Nobody ever talks about the Oakland A's, and. I think that's the biggest surprise is that they just get no respect, and I think they thrive on that. They, they, 
Nobody ever says, oh, the, everybody talks about the Yankees. I've been talking about Tampa Bay. Uh, everybody talks about sub, the Houston Astros. No, and even people have been mentioned on the Twins this year. Nobody talks about the Oakland A's. So they're, they're just, and they're not really hot right now, as I said. They've been six and four the last ten. But they're hover, they're playing good baseball. They're at a good playing level right now. It's going to be very interesting to see if the Astros can catch them in the division. Um or if Oakland's going to hold off, and maybe by holding off Houston, maybe do they finally get some respect? And you know what? They may not even care if they get any respect. They're just going out there and playing good baseball right now. So we're going to have to see if they can keep it up, but I think they actually will. I don't think that they're a team that's going to come out to AL, but I do think that they're a team that can pull an upset and maybe by a team that they're not supposed to win. Uh, the only team that I really don't give them a chance against is the Yankees because, like I said, there's only one team I think can beat the Yankees in a series, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, I, I think Oakland, other than the Yankees, I think they can upset any other team. If they had to play, uh, like I have Tampa Bay high in the power rankings this week, and I really like Tampa Bay this year. If Oakland were to beat Tampa Bay, I would not be surprised. I think they're a team that can surprise Every team in the league is set for the Yankees. To get by the Yankees, you almost have to break through the aura of them being the Yankees. And te- when you're in the same division, you kind of break through that automatically because you played them so much. So Boston doesn't get scared of the Yankees. Toronto doesn't get scared of the Yankees. Tampa Bay doesn't get scared of the Yankees. But when you're not a team within that year division, you, you kind of have to break through that aura first. And you see the Twins going through that. They, they never break- seem to break through that aura. They never seem to beat the Yankees. And, and I see that with certain teams. So uh, Oakland's a very good team. I could see them beating anybody outside of the Yankees right now. Uh, so people need to start talking about them. I think they're a very good young team. Next up is the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs were number one, number one last week, but they haven't been good for the past ten games. Uh, they actually went through a, a five of five hundred streak of five and five. Uh, so they've been slumping a little bit. Uh, and you know what? They're still not hitting. I mean, last week at least you can name a couple people uh, like Wilson Contreras was over hitting around 300. He's already dropped down to 222. Uh, Javi Baez was starting to wake up. He had hit. He had, he had a four game stretch where he was hitting 400. Right now he's actually hitting two under 200 for the year. He's actually the worst average in their starting lineup. So they're just not hitting right now. Uh, the only person in their lineup that actually is hitting is Ian Happ. Uh, he has six home runs. He's hitting 315. He's getting on ba- base at a 440 clip. He's been unbelievable for them. Other than that, nobody else has been hitting on that team. The, uh, as usual, they've been carried by their pitching. And with Alex Mills starting to have another ba- uh, having a bad start this last start, they're kind of down to three pitchers who have been pitching well, who is still, which is still good because most teams you don't see have three really good pitchers. But Hendricks, Darvish, and Lester are still pitching their, their behinds off right now. Uh, all of them still have whips under one. So they still are giving everybody a chance to win. Every, they're giving the Cubs a chance to win every time they go on a start. Um, their closer has still been Rowan Wick. He, he now has four saves for them. And his ERA has been good. His whip, he's still letting people on base, but he's closing games down. And um, Jeremy Jeffries has been doing great. He's been probably the best one in their bullpen thus far this year. Uh, still don't know what's going on with Kimbrough. He's starting to pitch a little bit better as his ERA had blown up to about 30-something. He's got his ERA down to 11 now, but he's still he's still trying to work through his kinks right now. I don't know what's going on with him. But the rest of the bullpen, listen, we already talked about the Cubs having a bad bullpen, and they can give games back pretty easily. And, and that happened a couple times this week where they just didn't, didn't have a kick clicking, didn't have it flowing. Uh, and they're not hitting to get a big enough lead. Uh, I gave you, I pretty much told you last week what was the recipe of how the Cubs have been winning. They've been getting out to a three run, four run lead, whether it's 4 1 or 6 2 or 7 2. They've been getting out to those type of leads. Bullpen gets back a couple and they still win by two or three. Now they're not getting that as big of a lead. They're having a one run, two one re- lead. So when the bullpen is giving it back, it's, it's, it's giving away the game. And that's what's been going on for them the past couple games during their 5-5 five five stretch. So they've got to kick it into high gear and get it back to normal. Uh, or it, they're going to be dropping down this power rankings and dropping down the, in the division pretty soon. Um, they're, they're pretty lucky right now that nobody in the division has really stepped up. And they're obviously going to make the playoffs, but they got to get, they got to start hitting. I mean, we're halfway through the season now and their best player and their MVP candidate shouldn't be hitting under 200. So he's going to have to wake up. 
moving on to a team that actually is starting to hit a little bit, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, they're hitting and starting to come around. We had a couple sparks from Bellinger earlier, and uh, obviously Mookie Betts has been playing very well. He, he's been killing the ball lately. And, you know, it's, it's really scary because with their hitting starting to come around, you, you see how good of a team that the Dodgers are. They already had an all-star pitching staff. Everybody on the staff has been pitching well. And now you throw in a couple hitters starting to hit for them. They don't need much hitting to win because of how good their pitching has been. But now people are when, – when you see some of their hitters start to come around, it, it's actually pretty scary. Uh, their, their team is very good, um, and that's why I have them – top two right now just in the in the um, power rankings and they're they're gonna start when their bullpen bullpen is shutting people down which they have been they've been starting pitching has been shutting people down and now they're starting to hit you, you gotta watch out this team's ready to roll and they're starting to trying to really get it going right now moving on to the number one team in my power ranking and shockingly they still don't get a lot of talk because they're in Tampa Bay the Tampa Bay Rays 17 and 9 Nine and one their last ten, coming off a sweep today after a ten five beat down to the Yankees. They swept the Yankees in the three game series. Uh, I, I, like I said before, they're the only team that I, that I think can beat the Yankees in a series, and they've been proving it so far. They've beaten them six out of the seven games they played this year, and they're just playing well. They're they're doing everything well right now. The crazy thing about their team is that they don't have people that you really would be scared of, but they're all playing well. I mean, obviously they have some people that are slumping right now, like Hunter Renfro and and, and Manchoy and everything like that, but and Zanino. But they have so they have really good hitters. And Brandon Lowell, I talked about him last week. He's still hitting over three thirty. Um, Mike Brousseau is is hitting near four hundred right now. He was playing first base for them today, and now people are starting to catch up with them. Uh, as you see, some of their other hitters like Willie Ames and and Yandy Diaz and Austin Meadows, they're starting to get their averages up in the two sixty two seventies. As a whole team, they, they're they're starting to hit well. Brandon Lowe has eight home runs, and you probably don't even know who he is. So they're coming out of nowhere, but they're all hitting well, and and. That's a good sign because I said their pitching would be their strength. And right now their hitting is the, the thing that's actually carrying them. Um, Blake Snell is still doing his thing. His ER is still three. Uh, his whip is still a little bit high at 1.1, 1.2. But he's still not pitching like a Cy Young, but he's pitching like at least the ace of that staff. Uh, Tyler Glasnow has hit a little little um, dark spot in his, in his pitching rotation right now. He's not pitching well. Um Obviously, Charlie Morton is still on the IL, so they need him back desperately, and they need him back pitching well. And their bullpen, I, I've said it last time, their bullpen isn't great right now. Uh, they're closer right now. Nick Anderson is pitching okay. But their team as an overall group is not pitching as well as they should. They have much better pitchers than they're pitching right now. So when you combine that with a no-name hitters, and you combine that with pitching that isn't even pitching well yet, and they still have a 17 and 9 record and they've won 9 of the last 10 and they've beaten Yankees set up 6 out of 7 and they've beaten them in the sweep to um, climax in today with a 10-5 win the the Rays are a scary team because you always get scared of the unknown and the Rays I talked to earlier about how Oakland's unknown the Rays are even more unknown than them you can't really name 5 players on your team if you're a casual baseball fan you can barely name 3 players on the team if you're a casual baseball fan but they play solid baseball they typically pitch well they feed field well and that's what wins in the playoffs so uh, the Yankees that better keep an eye on them and know that they aren't scared of them and in the future they better find a way to solve their problems against them because they haven't been, haven't been able to beat them yet this year other than that one time that does it for this week as we go on next week and talk more about our power rankings we'll, as we get closer to the playoffs we'll start talking about who's going to be the teams that you really want to put your hit your wagon to as the playoffs start um but we got a long season it's still only halfway done Baseball usually has 162 games. We're trying to run through this in 60. There's no all-star break for us, so we're going to go right through it. So hopefully we'll get some big news or something going on next week. Hopefully it's not bad news about the Mets and not playing or COVID or anything like that. So if you have any questions, obviously, for baseball, you can get me on Twitter, Pacman 4533323. 
Uh, you can give your opinions. Maybe I'll state them on the show. If there's any MLB news, power rankings, that's all next week. I'm your host, Peter Pac-Man Clark. This is Pac Sports Zone, and we'll catch you next week. Peace out.